All right, here we go. Hey, it's Adam and Mike's Just the Tips podcast, episode number 24, coming to you virtual style. Yeah, dude. I uh, figure we could try to do it a little bit different, kind of a different look for things. And plus, I mean, we're you got me in the gym like nine days a week anyway, so <laughs> figure we could we, probably We don't want to get there on a Saturday night, exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And we and you know we've been very diligent with the podcast every week, but we did miss the one when I was on vacation because we didn't really have a an elegant way of putting us together. So this kind of works for us. Yeah, and I figure you same know, time. yeah, if we do it like this, then we know that um, you know if we are if we are apart for a little while, that we can still you know reach out to each other and shoot podcasts. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. So uh, before we get going too far, shout out to our sponsors. Uh, uh, start up with shaft wraps. Not a not a oh. day goes by that somebody doesn't. Uh, oh, you and no, Sundog first. No, it's all right. It's all right. We, we can let shaft wraps have the have the first run at it. I was just thinking about uh, shaft wraps because again, somebody stopped me on the course and like, what is that? Right now, our our good friend uh, and pro Trevor uh, Alexander at Wiltwick, he just got a new shaft, like a like a bizarre one, right? Oh yeah, dude, that thing was pretty sweet looking, but that wasn't like a. That wasn't a sh that wasn't a wrap though. The the shaft was freaking awesome. They called it like the Hulk, and um, like Hulk, I think it was Hulk, and um, it is. Yeah, dude, that thing was freaking sweet. So we should probably so, reach out to Shaft Wraps and have them design one like that. Well, th that's what I'm getting at is is he's got this shaft that's unbelievable, made by Hazardous. It's a custom shaft. It's a pro shaft. It's green. It it fades into into purple. It's all iodized. What do you think a shaft like that goes for? I mean, to be honest, dude, I remember kind of as I was getting into being able to have the money to like buy new drivers or buy like, you know, like newer stuff. And I remember yeah. like wanting to buy the like change a shaft and like buy a new shaft. And that was the most the more expensive part of a club. Yeah. So, so I would imagine so those things being up around three hundred dollars. So this head turning shaft's got to be every bit of three hundred bucks. Eighteen dollars. Get yourself a shaft wrap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And listen, All I'll said. be honest. Like the, the uh, dude, I like the feel. You know, you put that that matte black one on my wedge, and um, not that it adds too much weight. And I mean, what does it change it from? Tell. You know, it changes so it. One, I one, just feel one, like one it's kind weight. of. I feel like it's kind of weighted evenly through the whole thing now. Yeah. The other thing is too is I, again I keep going into my bag. All my clubs look the same now. Those uh, Ping uh, i five thirties look a lot like my Vokey wedges. And when you're looking in a hurry, I look down, I see the yellow one, I pick out the yellow one, I hit the fifty four degree. So yeah, uh, dude, shout out to shaft sweet. wraps. Yep. Yeah, I but, think uh, um, you are. I think I'm gonna. I think I'll probably do the same with my wedges. I'll, I'll probably right. put something obnoxious on the fifty eight. Um, because you never hit it. <laughs> but, you know, I'll just bring it out just to kind of show it off, you know. There you go. But, yeah. So, um, uh, but shout out to, uh, to Sundog. Sundog, uh, my wife's, baby. Uh, yeah, my wife's uh, two pair of Mother's Day sunglasses came. So, uh, like I said, that was the right move. Uh, she, yeah. uh, JTT15 at checkout to get 15% off. And uh, every day, not just Mother's Day. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and to be honest, man, so um, I've had these for... A week now I, I opened them last week on on our podcast and um these things these are like the the everything and i wore them all day today at my daughter's softball tournament and mm -hmm. i mean just crystal clear i'm telling you these are like almost prescription like even <laughs> in my house right now so pretty yep. sweet so jtt 15 guys get yourself a pair you won't be sorry there you go all right and then, uh, of course, Todd over at BallHawker, BallHawker.com, uh, BallHawker USA for all your uh, repurposed, recycled uh, golf ball needs. Again, $21 for uh, for Pro-Vs, $24 for this year's uh, Pro-Vs. You can't beat it. Um, I got the, I got Money Mike playing those tri-tracks like they're going out oh, of style, yeah. right? So uh, he, he had a, yeah, we played with him last night, and he played good, but he had a strategy around today. And uh, executed most of the strategy, but lost too many balls out of tri tracks. Had to go. Had to go to uh, TaylorMade's. Didn't have the uh, the, oh, um, man. the tracks on there. Thing. 
I should have gave I'm you that thing you. where you can make your own. So that's what we're going to get into today. That's what today's podcast is going to yeah. be about. Is um, you know, yesterday we were we played with Money Mike, and um, uh, he's very analytical. I mean, he's a numbers guy. That's what he does for a living. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, now when we played with him in Florida, he was picking your brain, and I mean, he loved all. I mean, just the information that. And the more information you can get about golf, the better, obviously. Um, some people, like myself, um, tend to overanalyze it and not be able to put those numbers into their places to help my game, but it definitely helps me understand things a little bit better and pretty much know what I'm doing wrong. But So I think one of the I think one of the big things is is like you think the quintessential and and it's and it is our contemporary is Bryson DeChambeau is the most analytical golfer in history, right? But there was well, other I think he's the most ones. outspoken about it. You well, know, he's not shy I, it, to tell you what what's going on in his head. You know, these other guys no. I think are probably the same way. They just don't they don't verbalize it as much, you know. But even even going back to Ty, one of Tiger's swing coaches when he went went away from Butch Harmon. And he went to, um, I forget what the guy's name, but they got into, you know, swing speed and carry and attack angle. That was the first time. But, you know, from from that kind of analytics all the way to, like, you know, Chi-Chi Rodriguez or, or Lee Trevino, who were all field golfers, you know? You know, there's yeah. a lot of different ways to play this game. And you can get paralysis by analysis. There's yeah, no doubt me. about that. That's definitely me. I mean, I found myself now more recently, like standing over that ball, just like what feels like 45 <laughs> seconds, which is probably only like 10. I'm hoping it's only 10. Um, <laughs> but standing there, like doing nothing for like a good blank amount of time that like, I just, I need to wait. I need to like click, 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 and then go. Um, yeah. But um, listen, so we got talking yesterday and we were on 13 and you had a really good shot in there. Uh, what'd you have, like 100 yards, 109 or something like that, 91? Yeah, so you know, so the, the folks from the United Kingdom, from Thailand, from oh, Puerto Rico sorry. that follow us, uh, part, uh, 13. 91 uh, yards. At the, yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking more. It's a it's a relatively short par uh, four. Um, you know, it's a good drive over a hill. But if you hit the backside of the hill, it's going to run down to a hundred or inside of a hard hundred. Big drivers, you know, hit it down inside of fifty. But the way this this hole protects itself is the green. Uh, the green kind of sets up like a dartboard. It it tilts right into you, and it's pretty extreme. And half the green is covered by a very large, intimidating bunker. So you end up with a shot that's, you know, and on the average, other half 100 yards. is kind of like a slippery, scary putt. So it's well, a it well-designed it, hole. <laughs> yeah, it, it protects itself being a short par four by the by the green, right? So oh yeah, don't um, mind it, that thirty mile an hour wind in your face at all times, <laughs> because it comes straight down this valley. So it, it's a really cool hole. So, you know, yesterday um, I hit a good drive. I was down, well, for lack of, I, I can't remember exactly what it was. Call it 100 yards. Doesn't matter, yeah. right? But, it, yeah. but you know, you, gotta, you, gotta, you got your favorite club in your hand, right? So, um, pin, is, or, or, pin is right center. Um, everything slopes left to right and back to front. The opposite of a Rodan. And, <laughs> it's um, a Dan row. <laughs> <laughs> you... Um, you said you were you, you hit the ball great you hit a great shot you were pin high you were actually a little right of the pin um maybe what eight feet but if yeah. you miss the Six green seven. right it's it drops off and it's very thick rough and it's a very tough up and down if yeah because it's thick. if you miss that shot left your center of the green left side of the green whatever two putt i mean not an easy two putt but you're on the green putting you know right um yeah so so my strategy i i was right side of the fairway and i said you know my my thought process was to take the sand trap out of the way by hitting it to the the center maybe just slightly left center of the green even though it would have left me you know a 20 foot putt i thinned it i pushed it 
and uh, I got away with it. And I ended up six, uh, six or eight feet away, right of the pin. It didn't roll off the green, but I got, I felt like I got very lucky where that was, but it got lucky because of my dispersion thought process. All right, so that's what we're gonna get into because we were playing with Money Mike and he had a shot going in. Um, he had maybe like a, a little less than you on his second shot um, out of the rough and he's very analytical and he wanted to talk his shots out to us to like maybe confirm that that's, you know, good job or, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, sometimes you just, it's nice to say it out loud and have somebody listen to you. Um, yeah. But then he hit it in the bunker and his play was he wanted to get it up and to the left of the bunker. I know what he was doing because we play on the same level. I know that he just wanted to get it like up there anyway. Yeah. Um, and it came out of the rough too fluffy and you know, whatever your thought process is to just aim it left of the bunker. Do not be in that bunker on any miss possible, which is a hundred percent correct now. So, so that to me, the miss there is I'm not, I'm not thinking about the pin. I'm thinking about the middle of the green and I'm taking the bunker out of place. So I'm, I'm slightly left of the green, but my miss is long and left, right? Yeah. So he's going straight at the pin. He's got, we got US Open. I don't think Ruff he was going, going straight at the right pin. Now. I think he was going over, I think he was like going over the left half of the bunker, which. Right, uh, but it's still going over the bunker. <laughs> over the bunker, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, the miss is aim at the left, like go, try to go over the left edge of the bunker and miss left, right? Yeah. Yeah. Middle so, of the green. Because it, because thing. if you're in the middle of the green, no matter where that pin is, the worst putt you're gonna have is 20 feet. If you pull it, you're gonna have a 30 foot putt. If you skinny it the way I did and hit it right, you're right on the pin. Hmm. And that that's the way to play dispersion. But but Mike didn't take the 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 danger out of the way, even though it. I mean, it's only 100 yards. It's you yeah. know it, it, it you know it and it, it you know you should be confident over a shot like that, but. Again, he turned what I thought was a pretty easy bogey into a pretty big number. Um, yeah, because here's the thing: he didn't he, he didn't take into consideration of it's okay to be a little long or whatever. It's okay to be somewhere else because the yeah. problem is is then you're going to be in that bunker and then you got to hit a uh, uh, you'd either have to hit a really good bunker shot or you're just going to be out of the bunker. And then you're going to have that shot that you would have had if you just hit a crappy shot from the back one. You know what I mean? Just hit a exactly. hit an extra club or something and then be there, you know? So here's the yeah. thing, right? So I was watching this video this morning. It just happened to pop up. Um, I definitely watched the video before because we were talking about, like, figuring out that dispersion, what your circle is, and then get that somewhere. And you said this before yeah. we got on uh, – before we started recording, you said – what you did on number nine. Explain everybody, explain it, what you did on number nine today. Sure. So and you gotta uh, use the words. Play. <laughs> there you go. Um, match play, uh, playing a really long hitter. I mean, he's out driving us all day with a four hybrid and just, I mean, he's 40 yards in front of us with a, with a four hybrid. On a lot of holes, if he hits driver, he'll be 100 yards ahead of me. I mean, he literally hits the ball 350 yards. It's ridiculous. Uh, check out uh, Joey Redmond's um, oh, uh, dude, that bomb. Bomb, the bomb video. Uh, I'll try to throw it up, yard... in, a, I'll throw it up yeah. in, a, in a thing up here. Yeah, 500. Uh, you'll see 510-yard par 5. Uh, Joey uh, to 126 sandwich. yards. Driver sandwich into a par 5. So yeah. this is an incredibly long driver. But he's got uh, me and my partner down, him and his partner, to have us down one going in the nine. So we press the ninth hole. You guys know the, the ninth at Wiltwick. Water right, water in front of the green. You got to hit a good drive if you're going to get on the green. OB left. I don't hit a, OB left. I don't hit a good drive. I pull it left, which um, has me about 193 yards to the pin, 185 carry over water. Right? So when we talked off camera, you use the word cover. You said yeah. 185 cover, mm -hmm. right? All yeah. right, now so, you can finish your sentence. Finish so I, I was just I was story. just in the simulator, and I know my regular hybrid swing is gonna be like 175 to 
the, uh, in the air, 185 rollout. I had a little wind. I had a little bit of a flyer There's line. I know keyword. if I, yeah. I also know if I swing a, if I, you know, if I swing 90% instead of my normal 80%, I can get this ball there. And uh, that's exactly what I did. So, but instead of aiming at the pin, which was, would have had to fly the water, all of it. Which is more of a cover. To, yeah. So I aimed to the left side, knowing that if I hit the green, I'm going to leave myself a 30 foot putt, but I'm going to be on the green. But if I leave it short, I get, I'm only chipping. I'm not in the pond. Right. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm in match play and I'm going first, uh, I smoked it onto the green. I did exactly what I needed to do. Just pin high, probably hit it about 195 where it ended up. Uh, but I had a 35 foot downhill slippery putt, but it put a lot of pressure on Joey. It really did. Well, and, all, and well, there's that too. So you got match play. So now he knows you're on and two with a press. Mm -hmm. Now it gives him pressure on him to be like, all right, now I got to hit this on, you know? Plus he's, plus he's right side. He can't bail out. He's got to carry. So right. what's he do? What do you think he did? Hit it in the water? No, hit it long. Go long. Yeah, long. Hit well, it long that's a smart, into the that's rough. a smart play on his on his part. But then couldn't but then couldn't get up and down. Right? But at least so, he gave, you know, it's a smart play. Um yeah. so when I played when we played in that Ryder Cup last year, I was stroking on nine and I was up one. Now, water right in my head, um, the guy I was playing against goes first and he hit a pretty good drive. So mm -hmm. I bunted a hybrid out there. Um, then I went again, I went next because he was out ahead of me. I bunted another hybrid up there and I stroked on that hole. So now that put the pressure on him that he was like, all right, he's, I was sitting at the 75 yard marker. He's like technically in one. He's like, now I yeah. can go for it. So I put the pressure on him and then I just bunted a pitching wedge onto the green and he was like, all right, you're whole man. Um, yeah, but you used the very key words there, um, cover and rollout which I watched this video this morning and those are like the big numbers that the pros use instead of 185 to the pin, their caddies, all the, you know, you see them with the books, they're not, they know the yard to the pin. Like they don't do their, their, the, the pin sheets for the pros are literally, all right, this is eight steps on from the front edge, six steps to the left of that pond. Like they're, they're exact. They don't care about that. They care about what is it to cover and what is my rollout if I go off the back? Like they're very important important numbers. So like you were saying, you, went, you got into the simulator and you had this circle. Now for righties, the circle is, the, it's, an, it's an oval. It's kind of turned a little bit, you know, I don't know about like on camera right now. I don't know which way this is facing, but. Um, <laughs> the, but it's like a it's, 45 degree angle. Yeah, so if you pull the ball or draw the ball a little bit, it's going to be a little bit longer. And if you fade the ball, it's going to be a little bit shorter. So the the top left of the circle is elongated this way, and the bottom right is elongated that way. That's why hole number 12 at Augusta is very tough for, for righties. Um, but um, so oh, you take yeah. that circle, it's designed that way on purpose, by the I way. Ne I never thought about that. That's it, why lefties, it, it, it's, it's great so, for. It's so skinny. And it's the opposite of of, of if, the circle. If the, gr the green goes this way, dispersion goes this way. Wow. Yeah. So Colin Morikawa, I saw his caddy book. Colin Morikawa's, um, you know, on the green. So say a righty circle is this way, the green is this way. Again, on the camera, I don't know which way I'm facing. Yeah, yeah. But um, literally on this top half of the green, he just has it X'd out. <laughs> like just don't even go for it. You gotta just pretend it's not there. It's because the problem is with that green is the more you go towards the pin or like to the back right, the more cover it is. Mm -hmm. But the shorter the shorter of a shot you're hitting. So you know what I mean? Like if you if you gotta hit it over there, you either have to draw it or you gotta fade you know, it's just a it's designed that way on purpose, and that's why it's very hard. But let's take that circle, okay? Now for you, your circle is this big. Right, my circle's this big, and it's this big. You know, it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm saying, so you take that circle, right? And let's just say, um, you know, the pin. The pin is my my nose, right? Mm -hmm. That's your circle. But now, if there's a bunker here, what you do is you got to figure out the cover, right? Let's say yep. this is the bunker. The cover's there. So now your circle moves here, 
or here, or whatever. So whatever yeah. it is to cover that, right? But yep. then you know, all right, let's say there's a bunker up the left side of the green. It's like, all right, let's move my circle over here. It's like, those are the things that the pros are doing. Now you were talking about Bryson, right? Now, obviously in Bryson's prime, he's kind of, I'd say he's in his prime or maybe kind of in the back half of his prime or whatever we want to call it. But right. he's had the technology to do all of the stuff that, you know, we're talking about, like really dial his numbers in and everybody has right. the technology. But in Tiger's prime, the technology of shot, um, you know, these, these, these shot tracers and trackers and all these things wasn't readily available like it is now, but he was still doing the exact same thing. He just yeah. didn't talk about yep. it. He didn't, you know, he wasn't posting on YouTube or anything like that. He was still doing it. So if you go and watch some of Tiger's old stuff or even Rory's like old stuff when he was in his prime, because he's probably not in his prime anymore. He um, just won the other day. He won last week. <laughs> I know, I mean, but Scotty they, wasn't there. The criminal, the criminal they, wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, um, I think it was a, a PGA Championship. Where did he win? I think he won in Valhalla. Uh, don't quote me on this. 2011. Let's see. PGA Championship was 2013 in Kiowa. So I think he won in 11. And then somebody else won. And then he won again. And if you go back and watch, Rory didn't go at any pins that day. That, okay. that whole tournament, he didn't really go at pins. He played a very conservative figure that circle out and let's yep. let's just do it and then sooner or later listen like you've said you know bogeys are going to happen and birdies are going to happen but tapping pars are pretty nice you know yeah. what I mean? so yep. if you go so, and watch like any good player that's what they're doing so same thing with scheffler though and they say that's why his game sets up so well for augusta is his dispersion his oval is very small and those greens are very small. So you and I were talking about the other day. Um, I had a I had a really good round going on in league the other night, and uh, I had eight consecutive pars in league. The like a nice casual league that Adam is taking so serious. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're leading. By the way, uh, Joey told me he goes, I didn't know league started, he, and he's last year's defending champ. He goes, I'll, he goes, I'll start playing now. Did you but, tell him? Uh, like, go, oh, it doesn't start for like another month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, um, the uh, 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 season-long match play uh, registration uh, due by May 20th. That's like oh, tomorrow. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. It's Monday. Yeah. I yeah. thought we just so automatically anyway, get signed up for that. You would think. Anyway, so um, Mike's like, uh, you know, I'm aiming to the middle of the green, you know, and we get off the, the course. Mike says, you know, why weren't you aiming for the pin trying to knock birdie down, you know? And I go... I go, no, I know I was taking the sand trap out. I was playing to the middle of the green. Um, I thinned it. I hit it right and ended up like eight feet away. Ended up missing, missing the putt. Uh, but we, we had this discussion about, about positivity. And you're saying, hey, you know, playing to the middle of the green, um, you know, playing it safe. That's like negative thinking, right? And I, and I tried to, but I tried to defend it and I wasn't doing a good job. Now you just watch this. Do you understand a little bit better what I'm what I'm what I'm trying no. what I'm trying to say? And like I like I like I like I've tried to preempt every time I say the statement. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know, I definitely get it. Especially when you're a good player, like it's like, dude, if I can hit this shot and then like this is the miss or this is these are the two misses, right? Like, like this is pin. Yeah. This is the miss and this is the miss. Fine, I get it. Um. But that's not mine. So like your circle's the size of my head. My circle mm -hmm. is the size of my body. So yeah. it's a little bit harder to, that circle, that oval yeah. doesn't cover the green. So sometimes it's the next tee box or it's yeah. laying up in the fairway. Um, so for me, it's trust your swing, be like commit to the shot and try to hit the you know it's kind of like everything that we talked about in the meditation stuff it's like picture the shot picture the mm -hmm. picture the logo and picture the one and all these things so for me since i don't have that near miss like you do like literally 
you you your miss on 13 was you guys all right there literally your your yeah. miss on 13 was a six and a half foot straight putt pin high that was your miss my miss mm -hmm. could have been in that bunker or could have been on 14 t you know what i mean so so you got two things going on kind of simultaneously right which is kind of which is really really cool one is is that you recognize that and you understand that so when we're when we're on the range right and and we're and we're trying to you know it's not about knocking the pin down and bouncing it off the 150 yard marker right it's really about consistency so like when i have the i have the high school girls in the simulator right i try and help them you know show a pattern of dispersion but because they're entry level golfers right and they're kind of whacking it all over the place you can't take the two short ones and you can't take the two like really long ones which yeah. so if they hit or the two perfectly shot, straight ones so you well like i said so you have to take out the anomalies the, the you yeah. know so you know and go okay if i take out the really bad ones and the really really good ones what's my average what am i averaging this club to but then mm. when you're working on stuff you have to work on on getting that dispersion i love getting into the simulator and hitting hitting the same iron and going how tight can i make that circle how tight can i make that circle all right so here's the deal i'm gonna do that but i don't want to do it in the simulator so we're gonna get one of those little shots on the course no on oh, a yeah. grass yeah, range yeah, yeah, yeah. on a grass yeah. range we'll get one of those little pocket simulator mm -hmm. things that do it for you um but i because i need to hit it off grass because i'm telling you dude even the chipping contest that we that we posted i posted here um 54 yards to that basket i mean near misses for me i had two of those on the front nine yesterday and chickened out on both of them because mm -hmm. it was off a of grass not a freaking mat so yep. i need to hit off grass fine and and you're right if you know if you have the uh, and and again i guess you can do it wherever you know um yeah. i just i just like the the exactitude of you know seeing those those shots now you know where no, we should do it I is it. um is is uh northway because northway you can hit out of the garage bays no right? i, I mean it's still on, on the turf yeah right okay right. yeah so we know, can do it at it, Escott. we can do it we can do it in my backyard but it's they have grass. taken that uh, that that G quad. They do take that out to the range. We yeah. we could ask them and to bring that outside. And then you just have it hooked up to an iPad, and it's fine. We're hey, doing we, it. We're doing it. All right. We're gonna. Sounds pretty good. Pretty soon we're adding a new sponsor to the beginning. Is <laughs> for Foresight. They're Foresight. Yeah, or Trackman. Come on, yeah. Trackman. Just send one. Just yeah, twenty-two grand. Just Dude, say, there's just a send couple. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there's a couple like little like pocket ones that you can have the app set up on your phone, and then you put down the little like radar thing. It's literally the size quick, of this chapstick. Quick question for you: If you go, if you could only have one sponsor, right? And it was it was going to be monster. like the the monster. The Don't even finish this. The ultimate monster. No, no, no. They're, they're not one of the options. You got two. Op <laughs> <laughs> you got two options. You could either. Your sponsor would either send you a uh, 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 a quad simulator, a TrackMan, a Foresight, whatever one that you d you decided, or you could get a free fin scooter. Which one would you take? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I know. I know this. I know the um, uh, the, the the simulators uh, are a lot more expensive than the fin scooters. But if somebody was just to give me something, oh. I'd have a real. See, the thing with the fin scooter, here's the thing with the fin scooter. And yeah. this is what I was thinking about the other day, because I really, really, really want one. I love those things. I was thinking about how do we get it around? Like, you're going to have one of those, like, old lady, like, um, like you know, the old lady has a scooter yep. on the Ra back of her the Prius. The rascal scooter that, that goes <laughs> on a, a Reese hitch on the back of my car, and I'm going to put yeah. it on there, and I'm going to ratchet strap it down. I'm going to drive it everywhere. I actually think... I think that it would just be my my driver, my daily driver. The well, driver you're, that you're 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 like around uptown. I would I would keep it with me all the time. But like when I went to the mall, I drive it right through the middle of the mall. Yeah, I heck drive, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah like yep, I'm, yep. and if, I just have like a handicap sticker. Like it's okay, I'm yeah. handicapped. If, yeah. if we were like on the no on offense, the guys. on the 
if we were like on the rail trail and like taking the, like everybody else is walking, I'm just zipping by. Everyone else is there for it. exercise, and you're just like drinking yeah. beers and trying to fit. <laughs> we we go we go to the street festival. Everybody's got to walk the, the the county fair of just. I Losers. never get off the fin scooter, <laughs> out of my car on the fin scooter, and just. Uh, uh, that's Did you get that. a DUI on a fin scooter? You think? <laughs> I could try. <laughs> <laughs> could try well, I really hard. To, I think if it doesn't go above some, 15 miles an hour, you can't get a DUI. That's a rule I'm know. making. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they're moving into an uh, over 55 retirement community, and everybody in their garage has a, uh, a golf cart, right? And yeah. it's for driving like to the clubhouse, to the pool, and you're in this private community, and he said you can get a DWI with these things. He yeah. said, you, "He says you're not you're not allowed to drink and drive these golf carts around." Dude, oh, I honestly, go, I right? would just gate that entire community and not let any police in there. That's all I would do. So when we were down to Myrtle with uh, with Maddie, uh, I would get the dog loved driving in the golf cart. So I got him in the golf cart. I got a six pack of beer. We're driving around. <laughs> we're waving to people. Am I breaking the law? I don't. I don't think so. The I think one I was I, on wasn't roadworthy. In all honesty, well, and that's the thing too is like I remember reading somewhere that like you can't get a ticket like in a mall parking lot because like. What's the street name that they're gonna give you? You know what I mean? Like, I like, don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I but, think but there, everybody's like, seen that guy who got the DWI on the John Deere tractor. You know, on, on yeah. his lawnmower. You know, he got a, he got a Dewey, <laughs> so he lost his license. So he drove his tractor to the liquor store, got liquored up, and got another Dewey on the lawn tractor. So yeah, I would I just know. gate We're, that community off and just say no police at all. You know, just like this I'm is a drinking you. of highly intoxicated community <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what my dad said he always said for every beer you had just take f uh, 10 miles an hour off of how fast you drive <laughs> after six beers you can't go anywhere <laughs> i said so but after five you're only doing five miles an hour i said that's well that's why i drive 100 time. miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> so i could have nine beards <laughs> what were we talking about <laughs> uh dispersion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dispersion. But no, so yeah, so the dispersion of my golf shots is about the dispersion of this conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, so I do want to do a part two of this, to be honest, because um, I want to figure out what my numbers are. And, you know, at, at Northway, they did them, but we were all, I was also trying different clubs and things like that. Like, I want to yeah. figure those numbers out because you use those two keywords as cover and then also the rollout. So... They yep. know, all right, if I hit my seven iron, um, like for me, my seven iron, we'll just say off the top of my head, is like a 147 One carry. 147 carry. <laughs> so it's going to cover that bunker, and then it's going to roll out to 155 or whatever, you know, whatever yep. it is. Um, so it won't roll off the back, but it will cover the bunker or whatever. So I need to figure those numbers out. And then, like you said, go play around without the pins in. I wish, I wish they would have a tournament where they go, today, Dude, guys. This is what we do is we just play behind somebody and then just tell them and just not to put the pins back in. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm telling you. I, and then we make a video about how much there are assholes. Oh, these assholes not putting the pins back in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I forget what I was watching or what video. And they were talking. Oh, no, no. They were talking about D1 college players and about how the coach makes them practice without the pins on the green he goes out collects all the pins they play the round and they're aiming at the middle of the green unless you can see the cup right yeah. and you got to be that close so now i'm chipping or now i got you know i got a, i got a real shot but he said their score is reduced so dramatically just playing to the middle of the green so so that'll be my homework between now and next week is to figure out my dispersion your homework is to figure out when they started putting flags on greens and why hmm. You know, what I mean? oh. like I bet, like it probably it, started. You don't with think like that a, was from like a, day one? I don't know. Maybe they were like, "Hey, I, let's mess with them even more and start putting a flag here. We'll we'll stick it over here behind this bunker." Well, originally it was just some some Scottish guys with a crooked stick, a rock, and a gopher hole. You and know, a, and and, uh, a, and a thing of of scotch, right? That's why there's eighteen that, holes because there's eighteen shots in a bottle of scotch. Did you know I, that? I love it. I love it. I think I, it's I, I, I do. You know, you and I are, are um, overdue for a uh, a for a, um, a, a emergency nine, as it's been called, a around the golf that you play as hard as you possibly can, 
and it's emotionally, mentally draining. You're making every two foot putt and then you go to the bar and then you grab a six pack and you go back out on the course and you just remember how much fun this so, game is. Just like so, swing as hard as you can and not care where the ball goes. So um, question for you, sponsored by um, Ping or mm -hmm. Foot Joy or a whiskey company or a bourbon company. <laughs> Oof. Oof. All right, stay tuned for the answer on that one. I'll let you get, you have a week to decide on that one and, and why. Uh, um, uh, initial thought bourbon company, but I, <laughs> I have to do a little bit more thinking about that. Yeah, oh. we're going to come back with uh, bourbon sponsors, uh, Foot Joy, Finn yep. Scooters, and Monster. <laughs> oh, come on, let's go. Let's All right, go. so. That's our homework, man. We got to figure out those numbers. I mean, you All probably, right. you got yours. So, I got to get mine. Yep. So again, I I think that's it, man. You know, um, and then here's the other thing, and I just want to touch on this briefly, is that once you start seeing dispersions in cover, you realize that there's multiple ways to hit the same club. Like right now you're saying uh, your, your swing coach, the what he's got you working on, you, you got one move. Yeah. One move only is to try and hit the ball correctly. But once you get comfortable with that, and I'm still working through like the nuance of new clubs, but once you get that, you should be able to hit a flighted shot, a high shot, a draw, a fade, and each one of those clubs is gonna is gonna have a different cover and a different rollout. Well, that, right? yeah, that's and another having control, thing. And having control over all of those, you know? Yeah. And I don't have, yep. like, like, I only have one shot right now. I don't even have like a smooth seven, right? I have like a yeah. seven. A seven that I'm trying to hit correctly is what I have. Yep. Um, yep. So, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yep. Listen, right, man. Uh, yeah, it's been a good. Dude. Yeah, dude. If I wasn't near, I mean, I don't know if I'll have road nose, but maybe I'll get outside on the next one, too. So. All right, brother. Just the tips.